everybody, this is Kurt with Two Brothers Hobby. We're here today to show you the steps necessary to balance your prop or spinner for your electric power plant. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to be balancing our props and spinners today with the Dubro True Spin Prop Balancer. I kind of think of the Dubro as the, as the shark of the prop balancers. There's really no need to evolve the product because it accommodates almost every application I've ever encountered in, in RC aircraft flight. The way uh, you balance a typical propeller on the Dubro True Spin is through this top roller configuration by mounting both of the roller plates with the top rollers exposed you're able to accommodate up to a 12 inch propeller so we can swing a pretty large prop off of the main balancing arbor and still ma maintain a, a traditional balancing position now if we exceed the size or capabilities of a traditional mount we can also change the configuration to allow for the arbor to pass between the two supports one with the rollers in the bottom one with the rollers on the top which allows us to hang the arbor over the edge of the bench and accommodate very large propellers so without the, without the concern of hitting the bottom support bracket. So today we're going to go ahead and balance a, a propeller and we're going to balance a spinner as well. There's a couple different schools of thought when it comes to balancing. Either you add weight to the light blade, propeller blade, or you remove material to reduce the weight from the heavy blade. Today we're going to go ahead and show the weight reduction method, which is going to be using 400 and 220 grit sandpaper to remove some material from the back side of the propeller the heavy blade to allow the propeller to balance. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a couple of brand new props here from APC, still in the package, a 5x5 Speed 400 electric prop and a 12x6E thin electric. Now both of these props have, have had not had anything done to them, they're brand new out of the package, so we'll take a look at how they balance out. Now the first step before we actually balance the prop is to make sure that the center hole is large enough to fit our prop adapter. Now for the purposes of this video, we're not going to worry about mounting that, but it's, it's kind of paramount that you do make sure that your propeller will mount the, the prop adapter that you have designated for the prop before you start balancing so you know you've actually got a field ready or a flight ready prop that you're balancing so you can literally take it from the balancer upon balancing and put it on the airplane and start flying. There's no modifications to be made or nothing that can affect the, uh, the balancing or the location of the center hole. So the first step is always to mount your propeller and then move back over to the balancing station. Now for the first propeller, the 12 by 6, we're going to go ahead and mount it on the arbor. The true spin balancing arbor is set up so you can, you can actually accommodate multiple configurations or prop sizes. There's a few basic components involved in the arbor itself. You have the two centering cones, which are removable aluminum cones that slip over top of the arbor shaft. You also have a, a tension spring which will go against the, the rear of the uh, back balancing cone or centering cone. There's a flat washer that slips on behind that spring and also a little piece of fuel tubing which keeps the whole assembly tight on the arbor. Now what you're going to do is mount your prop between these two cones or you can also spin one cone backwards if you want to, if you, if you have to accommodate a shallower hub. You don't want the two cones to touch and the prop to be loose in the center so sometimes you have to spin one of the cones around and use it as kind of a backing plate. But once you actually apply the cones or slide the cones on the arbor, you're going to move that piece of fuel tubing forward until you have a little bit of tension in its spring. And that'll keep the whole assembly tight, keep the, both of the centering um, cones up against, tight up against the prop, and it'll allow it to track properly. So let's go ahead and mount our 12-inch prop and see how it balances. Now as we slide the tubing forward against the centering cone, you'll see the propeller start to, to be held tightly against the top centering cone. You want to make sure there's a little bit of tension in that spring so the prop doesn't spin too freely between the two cones. And now we're ready to stick it on the balancing rig and see how our prop balances. Always start with one propeller blade high and release. Now the heavy blade should swing to the bottom. It should do so fairly gently. If it very rapidly accelerates to the bottom, you may consider returning the prop. If it's, if it's heavily out of balance, uh, sometimes you have to remove so much material that uh, it's just a little easier to go get a new prop if your hobby dealer is willing to do that. As you can see, our 12-inch prop is fairly well balanced out of the package, which is always a, always a very nice thing to find. You have a very, very little work to do. In fact, you could actually fly with this propeller the way it sits right now. One of the things you'll notice, though, is as I hold it in different positions, 
it wants to return to a horizontal orientation on the balancer. What this means is that there's a heavy side to the hub. Even though the blades are fairly well balanced, there's a heavy side to the hub. So what we're seeing is that heavy side fall to the bottom as we put it on the balancer. Always check it in multiple orientations. Release from top center. Allow it to settle in. The larger the prop, the longer it'll take to center on the balancer, which is normal. There's more mass and greater inertia to settle out when you're testing the balance. Small props center out pretty quickly or balance out pretty quickly and show you where the heavy blade resides. So we want to take it to the opposite direction, hold it high, and release. So we've determined two things from this balance or from this exercise. We have one side of the hub that is heavier than the other, and we also have a blade that's a little heavier than the other. Now, with this being so close to center, quite frankly, I wouldn't really mess with the balance of the prop. You can, if you really want to get it absolutely true to dead center, you can spin it up on the engine and see if you get much vibration. At this point, I'd say this prop really wouldn't cause you any problems at all. Again, a perfectly balanced prop will stay stationary in any orientation. So we can look at it at the 10 o'clock position. If it were balanced, it would stay here. At 1 o'clock, it would stay there. No matter where you rotate the prop on the arbor, it should stay exactly where you leave it, provided there's free movement. Sometimes we get a false reading if there's a lot of friction on the arbor. If there's some, some gunk or some glue or something that got stuck to the arbor, it can actually get wedged in the rollers. And, and you set it in the arbor, the thing will hold still. You want to make sure, always make sure that your prop moves freely and it takes a while to center out so you know how you have an accurate balance reading. So let's go ahead and, and reduce the material on the heavy propeller blade to get a, a good true horizontal balance on this propeller. Now the first step to doing that is to mark the blade you're going to be modifying. It's just a good practice to get into. A lot of times as you pull it off the, the, the balancing jig and you make modifications, you sand, you place it back on the jig, sometimes you can lose track of which blade was actually the heavy blade and, and it's, it's not uncommon to, to, uh, to actually start sanding on the wrong side. You're concentrating so much on get everything right that you forget which one's the heavy blade. So I turned it around backwards in the jig to give me exposure to the back side of the propeller. Now a Sharpie marker will come off uh, of most, will, will mark well on a composite prop um, in a plastic prop as well, and it comes right off with a little bit of alcohol. 70% um, rubbing alcohol in a, in a rag, a paper towel, will take it right off. So you, once you're finished balancing, you can clean the propeller up and you'll never notice that you marked anything. So we now know our heavy blade. Our heavy blade's on the downside. We're going to go ahead and put a small mark. I do it at the hub just so I know which blade I need to be working on. And then we'll start our sanding procedure. Now when I sand a propeller blade, I sand it on the back side because I don't want to see any any modifications on the front side. It's just it's highly visible and it doesn't look nearly as attractive. Um, so I sand on the back side. And what I'll use is in this case we have a, a fairly balanced propeller blade so we're going to use just the 400 grit to do some final finish sanding on it. Keep a nice smooth finish and just take off a little bit of material at a time and keep checking on our arbor or checking our arbor on the balancer. Um, what I use is a, is a rag. I'll use a cloth rag or I'll use a folded paper towel on a hard surface to do my sanding. The goal there is, or the point being, is you don't want to modify this airfoil. Uh, every propeller has a, a unique airfoil to be able to produce the thrust necessary and, and provide the performance you're looking for for that particular setup. When you sand, if you sand with a hard sanding block or a rigid surface, you're going to start hitting the high points of that blade, which is going to modify the airfoil. So I like putting it on a soft surface so the blade itself can kind of give and move and then use just my hand and not a sanding block to apply the sandpaper. That's going to allow the sandpaper to fit the contour of the blade and also the blade to give under the pressure. So that should give me the least amount or should produce the least amount of modification to my airfoil. So let's go ahead and start sanding. Sand in small amounts and check. Sand and check. Do that regularly. Don't get too concentrated on removing material and evenly because you can very easily go beyond the balance point and now have the other blade as a heavy blade. And, and then it starts getting messy. You're sanding on both sides and uh, you end up chasing that floating point of balance back and forth between the blades. So sand small amounts and check frequently. Cleaning the blade after each sanding. You want all that dust and all that excess loose material off of there because it will affect the weight.